his outlook is more just about like trying things and mm -hmm. like trying ideas and thoughts. And I take his words very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and he has this, just as he said this once, he said, try every idea, every thought. Mm -hmm. And it's so simple. Like, yeah, like try every, you know, try all the ideas that you have in your, in your head. Mm -hmm. um, I have like, a, I have like a million ideas a week. <laughs> Yeah. I've started to write them down a lot and like now like I'll go back and I'm like wow that was stupid but at the same time I'm glad I wrote it down so I could go back to it and have that moment where like wow that was the stupidest thing I think I've ever done my name is Dooley and you're listening to The Real You thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us oh man, I, I, I love um, I just I love that this is what you're doing um, <laughs> partly, partly because I feel like a lot of people have the idea to do something like this, like myself included. I I had this idea to to start something kind of like this, and I was gonna call it I was gonna call it bearded, um, mm. like, like this, like bearded, yeah. <laughs> um, because that's what I, you know. I mean, we can get into that, but yeah. part of what makes me who I am. Um, but I just I love that just because it's a, uh, I don't know, just. It's so good to talk. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, just, I think it's great that you're that you're kind of putting people together and, and having conversations and um, yeah, podcasts cool. get a bad name sometimes, but uh, or a bad. Yeah, yeah. Rap, but, uh, no, it's been a blast. I mean, even kind of to your point of something, it's something I've dabbled with for a long time. But the thought it kind of came down to like even just generally, you know, you go in, you kind of start to question like what what is my life like? What am I really trying to do over just whether it's decades to come or, you know, life can be a lot shorter than you might expect. And so I think it's like, I kind of sat down one of the days and was just like, what is it that actually like makes me happy? And there's like music stuff and food. There's a lot of different little things, but one of them was, it was such like a simple, like talking to people and hearing what they're excited about. It's like, and I've said this before to other people and on this, but like I fuck with people who fuck with shit. And so it's like, if you're into something, first off, I, I might, it might overlap and then cool or not. It's something then to like learn about. So it's like, it actually just brings me joy to hear and talk to people and like, think about things that other people are into. And so I'm like, well, the best way to do that is just make that a more normal part of my day. And I'm like, well, how do I do that? And it's kind of like, well, what if it's just create a space for it? You know, like if you go to a party and stuff and you're kind of like, Oh, how are you? It's like, good, good. Oh, you're good. Oh, sweet. Nice to see you. Peace. You're like, what the hell even just happened? It's like, how are you actually doing? And, but when you, if you go out one night and you kind of get into a, like a combo with someone and you're like, oh man, like Eli, like, I'm so glad he's doing this. Or like, I had this cool combo and like, that's when I have a good night. And so that's really the concept of this is just like, yeah, that's what no, brings I me joy, those combos. Why not just create a space to where you don't have to like try and exit the convo. It's like, no, let's just talk for whatever and see what happens. Yeah. Cause I feel like it's a fun no, way to it's definitely, and I, and I think that a lot of people would agree that when you go to a party or you, you go to some social gathering, you have like 90% of your conversations are, you know, that weird little, like, yeah. I haven't seen in a while, like, how are you doing? Oh, good, good, a little hug. And then it kind of mm -hmm. drops off. Um, and, and I would say that that started to happen more um, when I was, I used to be in a fraternity and then I, I'm not in a fraternity anymore. And so like when I would go to events with yeah, yeah, yeah. the people in that fraternity, which I'm still friends with a lot of them, it was always kind of this awkward, mm -hmm. like, oh, I haven't talked to you in a while. Oh, we should hang out. I'm like, totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it wasn't anything against them. It was more just uh, just change in, in pace uh, mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that... Um, I, I agree with you. I, I fuck with people that fuck with shit too. <laughs> I, think, yeah, yeah. I think that's as artists. I mean, you're an artist. Yeah. I'm an artist. I think that's something that we can relate to. We, we want to talk about mm -hmm. the shit that we're into. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which is, I mean, it can never go dull when we're doing that. Yeah. Um, I want, dude, you, you <laughs> played a full, you played your, Alex Brennan was telling me you did a whole set right at Larimer Lounge of your own music yeah 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 yeah. all your own music 100 percent original that is that is insane yeah <laughs> that is really insane I like <laughs> I wasn't able to be there but um I mean 
that is wild to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like having your own art show, your own solo art show. It's the same thing. You're, you're having, everyone is there to see you. I've always wondered what that's like, you know, as a musician or as a performer, mm. what it's like to see a room full of people mm. that are there to listen to what you make. Yeah, yeah. No, so versus, versus like with art in a way, yeah, one day maybe that'll happen. I have an art show and like people are coming there to see my yeah. work. Um, but I think there's something different about being on like a stage, like being the, you know, being up on like the really yeah. <laughs> kind of, and, you know, seeing whether it be your friends, family, just random people. I think that's, I don't know. That's, that's a different, I kind of want to know what that feels like just from yeah. like a, a an, an interest perspective. Yeah. Um, no, well, but, I mean, even to kind of go to like, to your point, the actual feeling of it was like, it's like I want to say electric in the way of um or ah it's um it's like a I don't know how to put this out of sounding weird but like a divine honor if that makes sense as though it's like you know you as an artist you put in so much effort and work on something that's kind of just crazy to people like it's not even like it's okay it's making music or painting or people do video whatever it is it's it, but there's some sort of like world that you're kind of creating or that you're it's like coming out of you for some reason and so I think for that show specifically um it's kind of a backstory to getting on the show but even that kind of decision of you know a lot of people can can DJ and do this stuff and there's going to be a crowd there are people and I have this sort of moment of well no I actually want to do my like I want to play with my shit and there's something I think with that feeling of like to your point and it being like this kind of like it's a big moment even if it's a small it's random a show real, it's a surreal experience yeah 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 and so it's like so much time that even in this room like where i'm looking for snare noises like doop, doop, versus ch -ch -ch versus and it's like i'm sitting here for 40 minutes trying to find a snare noise let alone creating into a song to where you know i, I've, if, I don't know if you've checked out some of my tunes recently but pretty kind of like out there in terms of these sort of journey-esque songs like knowing how much time and like I actually care about creating this little world and then feeling as though to go in and share that with other people and not just one song but like the whole journey feels as though it's my own um and like coming with that set it's it's like a it's like the love of the like vulnerability of just sharing my entire world that I've created with myself basically and collaborations of course and all these other things but um yeah so I think that's what I don't even know if that's the answer of how it felt but it's like when I go to that oh, you're, divine you're honor saying, it's like you're saying like that uh like I know what you mean by that like you, you spend an hour finding one little like mm -hmm. one little aspect of your song that you know someone hears that snare that you you know took 40 minutes in your song they're not gonna be like holy shit that's they might be like holy <laughs> well, shit, I don't know. <laughs> It's hitting or something but uh it's those little moments i think that like it's a culmination of all those little moments where you're like i spent hours finding this yeah and then now i'm in a place where i'm sharing that yeah i'm almost bestowing the honor on someone else yeah and then I'm receiving so yeah i i feel that that's uh um, that's, that's cool i like that yeah that's, no so it was it was super and it, it also kind of um it like invigorated more like it's like after you do the show you know it's fun you kind of like hugging people but so great and then you kind of come down from the the high of it the next few days or coming weeks and but even now it's kind of sitting there like no like I love that aspect of it. like DJing and putting on a show is all very fun um but that aspect of like having it be in my own songs and things that I'm like creating is it's like re it it re-excites me or like almost re um opens up new doors in my own mind of like what's possible and knowing that that's just a small taste of like oh well what if we get a full light system next time with like different laser things and um, we had brennan was running the visuals for it yeah. and so we had done a whole curated thing brennan like fucking shout out brennan <laughs> I mean, he, yeah, shout he, out brennan. he like got the program he bought the program and the board and like was like fuck it i'm gonna like do this shit and we came up with these visuals together and then he started um, he was like practicing too and everything and so 
yeah, it was just like a super fun, like joyous moment. And then also, yeah, that feeling of literally six, seven years locked in the studio, like from first trying to open the program to like sharing it there is it, it is, it does feel special. So I appreciate, I appreciate the, uh, yeah, thought dude, there on, on also at the same rate, like collaborating with a friend, like with Alex, who just, I mean, he's always been into that, um, into the visual kind of things. Cause I know he, he'd been making like some visuals for like your, for music for a while. Yeah. Um, and I was, I was at his house with, with Carmone and, and he was like showing us his, you know, his new board and like yeah, his, yeah. And everything. <laughs> and I'm, just, you know, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like how, there's just a million little screens and obviously yeah. it's something that you learn how to do. And it's, you know, yeah. and that becomes like just how you make music. It's his, yeah. his craft, his art. Yeah. Um, but I think it's so neat and nice to involve, you know, you, you had a show, but you also got Alex some experience. Yeah. You have experience. Like, I think that stuff's so important to, to recognize and to, and to, you know, share because, you know, it's great and all to have a show, but it's even better to share it with someone or like share it with your friends and, and things like that. Yeah. 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 Well, even, even to kind of go, go to you on the, it's like the, uh, I saw on your Instagram thing, I looked it up before the call is art is nourishment. Like break, break that down for me. What does that, what does that mean to you? Why is, why is that like your little statement up there? So I'm really glad you asked me that. Um, I love Rick Rubin. Mm. Rick Rubin, I'm sure you know who Rick Rubin is. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, uh, um, <laughs> and for people that don't know who Rick Rubin is, please look up Rick Rubin. <laughs> um, basically, he is... I, I don't I, I know a lot about like his you know Def Jam and you know where it started and all the people we worked with like I, I I know all the history of that and and I actually did an art project a conceptual art piece about him not too long ago um, but what I really enjoy about Rick Rubin is that more he's not he's he's a producer and he's he's kind of this invisible producer that's what a lot of people will say about him like he's like one of the most prolific producers like living and you you know you can hear an album be like oh Rick Rubin produced that and you're like what the fuck that makes no sense kind of, yeah. it doesn't seem to fit with his but the thing that's so great about Rick Rubin or the things that I like about Rick Rubin mm -hmm. is that his purpose or what he finds to be his purpose in the music making process mm -hmm. is to take away all the clutter and all the junk mm -hmm. so do you know like his his studio like Shangri-La and like Malibu have you ever um, seen the artist talks that he does? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah with Rick Rubin. They're usually done at his um, his like house slash studio slash art space yeah. in Malibu that he calls Shangri-La, which is <laughs> the best name you can <laughs> And Rick Rubin is like, you know, he's got the big white Gandalf beard, like yeah, 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 yeah. looks like a guru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically, he his whole thought process to making someone's best form of art is we have to take away everything. Like we don't want a clock on the wall. We don't want, we want super minimalist, like mm -hmm. take away everything that you don't need mm -hmm. and then sit down and start making whatever it is you want to start making. And so in the music sense, you know, these producers are in a studio, mm -hmm. but there's no other distractions. They're looking at the beautiful fucking beach. Like mm -hmm. they're in the best place that they could be to make something. Mm -hmm. but, on a, I guess on a take all the take away all the millions of dollars of yeah. that you can do that. Um, his outlook is more just about like trying things and mm -hmm. like trying ideas and thoughts. And I take his words very seriously. Um, and he has this just as he said this once. He said, "Try every idea, every thought." Mm -hmm. And it's so simple. Like yeah, like try every you know try all the ideas that you have in your in your head. Mm -hmm. um, I have like, a, I have like a million ideas a week. <laughs> yeah. and I've started to write them down a lot. And like now, like I'll go back and I'm like, wow, that was stupid. But at the same time, I'm glad I wrote it down so I could go back to it and have that moment where like, wow, that was the stupidest thing I think I've ever done. Um, <laughs> but what he gets me to do is to just sit back for a second and be like, oh, I could, um, I could pursue this, this, you know, I'm working on like four paintings right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually only working on like one or two. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of just were having other ideas for different works. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just gonna do them. And then when I stop having ideas for that, I'll move to the next one and kind of just work 
Yeah. On a bunch of different shit at once. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of like Basquiat. Shout out Basquiat. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was kind of cringe, but I'll yeah. take it. Um, <laughs> he worked on like he worked on like 30 paintings at once. He was ridiculous. Um, uh, so maybe that's why he was so great. But um, but back to Rugrubin, basically like he just the way that he sees or the way that he makes people's music or wants to make their music really good is he's he's like, look, if we make if you make a song and 500 people listen to it, it's not some super mega platinum album or whatever, but 500 people listen to it and they love it mm-hmm. and you love it mm-hmm. first and foremost that you love it mm-hmm. and only 500 people listen to it. If that gets us to the next step to like to keep making music because mm-hmm. that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. I kind of take that to my art and, and the things that I do like because sometimes it's easy to get kind of caught up in like what do the people that like follow me want or like what do the masses want mm-hmm. um and that can be really hard when you're just on Instagram and I just I follow a bunch of painters and I'm like oh that's cool like I should try something like that but then I'm like Am I doing that because I want to do it or am I doing it because that's what I'm seeing? Yeah. Um, and it's kind of a double-edged sword because I use Instagram to mm-hmm. sell my work and to, mm-hmm. you know, move my business and, you know, yeah, share to do things. And then at the same rate, sometimes I'm on it all the time mm-hmm. and it's not good for my actual art. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. And that's where the whole kind of Rick Rubin philosophy for me comes in is to just strip it all the fuck away like none yeah. of that matters the only thing that matters is what you want to do mm-hmm. and if 10 20 people like what you want to do and it's not the thousand or whatever that you have mm-hmm. who gives a shit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, that's all that's all that matters so i've been kind of really trying to kind of embody that and like cultivate that into my work mm-hmm. um it is tricky. Um, it's just inherently tricky just with all the media that's just constantly in our face. Yeah. Uh, but the artist nourishment is just a, something that he said. Yeah. And I just like quoted it. I like to just put it there. Yeah. Um, because it is nourishment. It is yeah. um, something for me that makes me happy. If I yeah. paint all day long, I'm having the best day in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm sure the same goes for you. If you're, you're making music with your friends, you're making music by yourself, you're mm-hmm. listening to music. Like mm-hmm. those are the, those are the best days. Yeah. 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 Um, so I don't know. I, I just, there's like, just before this, I was kind of like, I was like really looking forward to talking to you. Cause I was like, damn, I'm just kind of <laughs> on my phone. I'm not really doing anything. I'm kind of waiting for the sun to come out so I can yeah. go outside and do something. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I and basically since today started, I have done nothing. Yeah. Which is okay. That's, That's totally yeah. okay. No, doing nothing is fine. But I wish at the same time I was doing something a little bit more mm. productive or I was making something or writing something down or putting them, you know, putting down some ideas or thoughts. Yeah. Um, so because, it's, yeah. It's interesting though, on, on the word nourishment too. And to first of all, I love, I have a couple different thoughts we can hop in on. But when I think of nourishment, I instantly go to like water right like we like water like nourishes us as humans but there's something that what i love the art is nourishment thing is so does art it's like the same way we need water and that like brings us life it's like the basis of life is so so is art like so is the like art is what i think defines us as humans and it's not the art like okay painting is art music is an art the way you walk down the street and smile at a stranger, like that is art. Like your existence in itself is art. It's like the, it's what makes us human. And that's right. I don't even know how to properly describe that, but it's something that. You're like, on the right well, track. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> we, <laughs> when we all know what it is too, it's like, it's kind of like your soul. Like it's something that's there that we can't quite grip, but. Um, well, because but, art, art is something that I don't want to cut you off, but okay. there's a book I read it's kind of a it, it's titled artist therapy but it's not like a self-help book it's a very it's written by Fidon, which you know publishing company that does like very historical mm-hmm. uh, like books on on art um and it talks about how art the, the art that you like or that i like you know we can have very different tastes mm-hmm. um, that's kind of art is everyone has their different their different taste 
but it's usually what's missing from our own lives mm -hmm. is what we're interested in art. Mm -hmm. I always thought that was an interesting thing, or interesting way of looking at it. It's not completely that's yeah. why we like art, but just a little aspect of why we're drawn to certain forms of art mm -hmm. is, is it lies in the idea that usually there are some things in those pieces that mm -hmm. we're longing for or we don't have in our current lives. Yeah. Uh, and that's what makes us intrigued or something. Yeah. I, I don't know. That kind of fit in with what you're saying, but I, yeah. I, I thought of it. No, but it's cool because even, even thinking about that, like as you're saying it, within the world, like I consider my, my uh, music line, so the first thing like rooted in sound is my bio. And then under that, it's, um, uh, oh, fuck, something for, I'm blanking on my fucking main statement. It's something for the <laughs> Sonic Voyagers. The main word is Sonic Voyagers. Yeah. And I was looking at your Instagram. Let me get some. Just because I know you put some cool shit around them. It was rooted <laughs> in sound. Intentional vibrations for the sonic voyagers. That, that's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> Intentional. And so it's like, what is it? Like, why? What, first of all, what does that statement even mean to me? And what? That's something I've changed to more recently. And it's. Um, as I start to create more things and stuff just sort of, again, kind of falls out of me, I would describe it as it's like the thing that keeps inspiring me in other people's music and in my own world is like the journey of music. And so the intentional vibrations thing is being like, listen, I'm every aspect of a song going on or intro or whatever is it's just me putting together this thing like intentionals and like I'm actually present when I'm doing it and vibrations is I love the vibration <laughs> but um the sonic voyager part though is more of what i'm talking about with your concept of what is it that i'm missing it's like i think it's being like uninspired i think by a lot of modern music whether first off there's the standard pop music all that stuff but even in the more weirder bass music realms is and it kind of comes into the the dj world too and stuff it's like I've been to a lot of shows at this point from the big epic ones thing, always have a blast, like no matter what. But there's something where the shows that really stick with me is I'm like, they took me on a journey, basically. It's like I felt like I entered into their world. And that's what inspires me. And so it's it's basically the thought of like what I feel like I'm missing is people letting you into their world. And that world involves certain highs and certain lows. It involves goofy shit, it involves painful shit, it involves like all these different things. And I see so many artists like get put into this box of, I do this style of music and that's where they built their brand or their thing on. And so that's what they do. It's like my style, what I'd consider my brand again is the, is the adventure of me. It's like, it's knowing that I have these ebbs and flows of life and fear and shit that has gone terribly and shit that's been great. And it's like, that's the voyage of, the beauty like the beauty and the human experience and that's what i feel is is missing from like a more raw art standpoint so to your to your kind of philosophy around that is tie you down like that, that mindset doesn't tie you down to a specific style or realm yeah like like if you wanted if you you know if the adventure just starts taking to something like a little bit more techno or a little bit more like just out of the dubstepy bass kind of area a lot of artists that have already established themselves like that would be most of them wouldn't do that because they they're already kind of in that that box that you're talking yeah. about yeah so yeah yeah kind of leave it at you know something more that's just a description of what you want to do yeah it opens up everything you can do yeah. whatever you want it's it's yeah. the adventure it's the adventure of the unknown and that's like where so much of the i think dopeness of life is and that's like that's what i think happens in my creation process is kind of like I love the second half of the song sometimes it's entirely different than the first half and it's like okay cool that's fun too like I don't know there's it's not really normal but it is kind of normal too but also I guess it's yeah it's the so it's the seeking of being okay with whatever it is like I did the rap um I did like a rap album that I put out a little over like a month or two ago and it's like <laughs> it's like I got like, like, like twenty. Carmon, Carmon was like, I li Carmon and I lived together, so he was like, he came home and he goes, like, Dooley like raps last night, like a whole <laughs> like a whole set, and I'm like, what? Like I I just didn't know that you rapped, and 
there, I think I I feel I I have a vague memory of him showing me like a video. Yeah. Uh, maybe I just saw it on someone's story or something like that, and I was just like, "What a fucking beast!" Like, you already, dude, you already had the platform, and then you're like, "All right, I'm gonna rap over this song." I mean, come on. <laughs> Talking about the moment, that is oh, that is electric. electric. Yeah, gotta you know throw throw a little curveball for the crowd. They're all used to like the bass shit, and then you start. Yeah. Like, what is going on? You throw it in rap, dude. That's crazy. That's that is. So, <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> no, so it's fun. It's fun. It's like, but to that point of that's the thing of that's that song's about food too. It's like chopping up samples, cooking up my own beats. It's like a whole thing about. um chefing up food and beats combined but i'm also like okay. that's just also the like it's kind of like almost a joke song combined with just like no that's actually what i love to do i love to chef up food and beats like that's right and so it's kind of that too where i've got this weird kind of heavy shit the second or uh, ending out the set's like very like dark sea monster type of stuff but then in the middle it's like all right here's a little breather of like i'm ha- i'm pretty much fucking with you guys also this whole time like, it's like i know it's all yeah. serious music like the super moment but at the same time it's like yeah. can we just like laugh a little bit and just be fucking like we're all gonna be all right all right <laughs> have you seen dj diesel the video no i uh, so i yeah 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 oh i know shaq's doing the stuff no, 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 no. okay so i didn't take it from shaq but it i didn't it was just you know i came up with this alter ego named dj diesel my freshman mm. year Oh, oh! I didn't, didn't know that. Didn't know that uh, Shaq's name was Diesel at the time. I don't think it was yet. He probably hadn't even. Done, you may have come up with that. He probably stole it from you. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was like an art project. I, it's on my Instagram. You should you should watch it. It's pretty. Yeah. pretty funny. But it was just the problem was to make. Uh, it was in a conceptual art class. It was like to make uh, a, a work of art as an alter ego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's just one of those things. Like I made it as it's a joke. Like it's a. It was a joke, but also I like to make, I used to like to produce music. I didn't really produce this one because it was just an instrumental from NWA. Um, but I like to make videos or make music videos, things like that. And I made this really stupid, really stupid video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is honestly, it, it, it is mind numbing sometimes when I watch yeah. it. <laughs> um, but it's hilarious and it's great. And it's like, I don't know, it's a, it was a form of, Mm-hmm. It's something I wanted to do, just like yeah. the rap. It's, like, it's kind of a joke, but it's like still, yeah. <laughs> still made it, you know? Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who cares if it's fucking stupid? Like, yeah. if you make it, like, you're still you're still making something creative and doing something. So yeah. I don't know. I like stuff like that where it's like this is really bad. Yeah. <laughs> you still made it, and it's really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's like ah, oh, that happened. I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So I was wondering what um what do, when you make music because when you're making music and I'm do you work in Ableton? Yeah, yeah. Okay, like because like when I look at Ableton, I'm like my mind is I'm just I feel like there's like a million needles like <laughs> like acupuncture or something, but like not like it's stress inducing. Yeah, uh, that's just because I don't know the the software very well. Mm. Uh, but like, what do you think about like are you thinking about the task at hand when you are making music or are you thinking about like because yeah you know, you're saying like there are songs that kind of are diving into some like deeper fucked up shit and then some songs that are, you know mm-hmm. um so i'm just curious like if you know you're thinking about life and everything that's happening while you're making the song or if you know sometimes you're just like no i'm making a song right now yeah that's so that's interesting there's a lot of I, the very the very direct answer is I I have no idea, <laughs> but to kind of try and break it down, I and, that, that is exactly what I would say to someone who's like, "What do you think about your paint?" I'm like, I honestly couldn't tell you. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like there's I have no idea, but at the same time, like there's a couple of different session styles too. Some of which I'm like working on a song that's ninety five percent done, but also the last five percent is always the hardest. Like, really, I can I can whip up a beat in the next. 10 minutes here, 10 minutes here and send it over to you. But to finish a song is, is different. <laughs> it's like, a, cause you start to get into your own head about it. Like, is it the mixing process? So I guess to kind of go, go on those boats, there's like what I would call like a, um, the mix and master type of session, which is I got to go down. This is me doing technical work to like make this sound professional. 
that's like one of the hardest. And I think the big differentiator actually between people who make it or actually put out shit versus people who don't. And it's cause it's, it's really hard, but so there's that. Then there's more of the creating a song type of session. And then there's like the sound design experimentation session. Both of those are kind of intertwined. Um, and they, those are where it happens kind of just, I have no idea, uncontrollable will depend on what I'm in the mood for. The second I like click on my hard drive and it opens up, I'm like, and, and then it just, <laughs> you just kind of fall into one of those modes. Um, but yeah, the sound design stuff is one of the most fun, but that's also needles in my head, like pisses me off. I, I'll be like, cause it can, t- it can happen in 40 seconds. You can stumble upon something or whatever and it's like holy shit i have a whole song i'm about to like nail out with this thing or you can spend hours and hours and like try shit try shit and then literally it's fuck it just like delete everything or not not have a single source of quote value towards a song or something um so yeah that's definitely i think the hardest and where i actually have the most work to be done but also it's the most my like expansive like if you can find flow and just creatively getting sounds together that you jive with like then you're on to something creating the song part is more of a that's where you kind of fall into the like vibes is it the life thing oh it's a rainy day today I'm kind of oh this sounds kind of mystical I'm gonna do something rainy day vibes like that that kind of happens but the sound design world is I think where I like to nerd out but also feel like unlimited potential forward for that which is fun that's where and that's where I my my intros for songs I am proud of because I think it's this it's not the bass design stuff but it's the world building sound design but that's where now I've got I feel good about that like I I love world building bass design is where I'm just like god fucking shit I don't know I'm like YouTube tutorial like trying to find shit it's hard so I don't know that's my that's basically when um, when do you know when and when people ask me this I also kind of don't it's a very abstract answer um but when do you know a song like is done oh god <laughs> this is where you also you like i'm asking these questions because i when someone asks me them i'm always like that's a really good question <laughs> yeah yeah no no it is it is it's i'm literally today so yesterday i finished i fit okay there's finished a the song isn't like ready to be heard and then there's like finished like ready to release I finished a song a while ago that was like ready to be heard, but then I was like, not, it's not ready for release. And that, I guess it was the, like, I don't know. It's just the feeling of like, there's just one more thing I can do. And so yesterday I finished it. I wanted it to be ready for release. I started doing the car test and now I have two technical things that I have to, I literally have to turn up the sub and, um, Oh God, now I'm blanking on the second thing. Oh, the, the outro, there's this little talking sample I have to change. So there's two, there's two, but that's where I'm like, the song's, the song's done. Um, the car test is like the, the car test is the Mecca. That's the, the place where, you know, like, because that's where you listen. I don't know. That's where I listen to a lot of music. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Doing it yeah. in the car is almost not even from like the, I don't know if people do it because of the speakers or they can tell different things. But for me, I would see it as like, this is where I want to be in my car listening to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sound, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So the car and the car one's important though because so I have a I have the um, monitor and I actually bought a sub the other day, which is like definitely a large investment. But I was like, I uh, that's like yeah. one of my that's like treat yourself to your. <laughs> you know, I'm buying a sub. You're gonna buy one sooner or later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm doing this for the next eighty years unless I die tomorrow. Like I'm getting a sub and that's how it's gonna be. But so separate of that, I have a better sound system per se right here. But then when I go to my car, it's like I actually only really listen to music on my system. Like sometimes I will, but my ears are actually a little bit more blind to like how it's supposed to like stand up against. Because yeah, at the end of the day, you do want it to be able to go from your favorite song into your song and not have it be this like a lot of times you're battling with volume, but there's other you, you just you know what I mean so the car is important because that's where I listen to my music too like sometimes headphones but the car is where you kind of get that it's just my so yeah that's you know what it passes is. the car test yeah you know what it's supposed to sound like in a car yeah yeah, yeah. And, and even just like my car specifically sometimes I'll play shit in someone else's and I'm like ah oh, is it bad or is it just the sounds different or like that's where you kind of like beat yourself up but yeah. at the end of the day that's that's I feel like every 
person who's creating anything, you're going to beat yourself up in some way. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, even to, even to flip the, flip the question more onto you, like painting world, like I, I'm pretty blind to that process. Like I've painted a th- maybe three things before <laughs> and I love it every time I've had a blast, like, but you know, it, like it. Yeah, no, I was, and this is where like, even kind of in, in the like large canvas, I like the, I think it's the acrylic, like more dense style paint. I don't know what the, if it's acrylic or what the. I think you're thinking about oil because mm. oil, oil, wa- acrylic is water-based paint. Oh, then so it's the opposite of acrylic. <laughs> oil paint, um, they're both very fun to work with. I, I just, when I say just, I more recently started working with oils, but that's just because when you start getting, like taking the higher like art classes, you start working with oil. It's also, I mean, I hate to say this, but it's, it's the oils is like what you would get into if you're becoming kind of, I guess, a more well-rounded or a more um, uh, technically sound uh, a painter. Uh, just because oil, the blending of oil paint and, the call it the technical ability of using oil is a little bit at a higher kind of quality and standard than acrylic but at the same rate people do really really cool stuff with acrylic mm-hmm. like sometimes way cooler than what you can do with oil yeah, um, yeah. it's more just kind of like a i think it's just a societal thing where it's yeah. like you only do oil or if you just do acrylic like maybe someone would like look at you differently or not but mm-hmm besides this point it's also oil paint is like a million times more expensive than acrylic it's like hmm. it is very very expensive what's a, what is like what is a paint can going for these <laughs> um, i mean they're different sizes like there's there are a bunch of different sizes but like like a, like a beginner oil kit hmm. like with like tiny little tubes of paint hmm. and like brushes probably would run you like 50 to 60 bucks hmm. Versus if you got an acrylic beginner kit, mm-hmm. maybe 20. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it gets, it, it jumps. Yeah. Um, but also, I don't know. I mean, I just, I kind of now at this point, like I was talking to my dad. Um, I was just like, you know, because like they still support me in, in various ways. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not completely financially independent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I pay for most of my own because I, I have my art mm-hmm. business but I can you know I can afford different you know things and like you know I could buy a canvas that's this big or mm-hmm. and then be okay um but I was just saying like you know oil paint is and he knows this my parents are in art and, and stuff and I'm like that yeah, oil paint is like really it's like fucking me up it's like yeah. you know <laughs> you know that's like 30 40 bucks and you know I need you know if I need four colors I'm spending yeah well over a hundred dollars yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's just become this interesting thing where he's, you know, he understands, like, so he'll help me out with it sometimes and stuff, which is really nice because mm-hmm. he sees it as, like, I'm in college still and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and he, he'll do me that solid and stuff. Um, yeah. And it's so interesting because I the I think the biggest thing, unfortunately, that, that stops people from kind of call it achieving greatness or achieving what they really want to do mm-hmm. is the money. And yeah. I think fair to say in kind of every realm of life yeah oh yeah yeah. but i started to get kind of in this mindset that like like this past week i spent (laughs) way more money than i should have not on like just on like going out and having fun you know stuff um but really my only other expenses like the things that i like to like things that i like to do yeah 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 yeah. so when i make money like i I still work at uh digital Mm. uh and I do, you know, stuff for them. Yeah. And like most of the money I make from that, I just buy more art materials with. Yeah. 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 And that for me is that money is money well spent, money well yeah. earned, money well spent. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean, that was the sub for me. Same shit. It's like, yeah, it's it like, was a big, it was a big purchase, but what else, what else do you actually want in life? Like for you to have that freedom to experiment with some different painting styles because you got extra paint like fucking do it exactly. i can i can try this out and yeah it might be a a pretty expensive decision mm-hmm. yeah, yeah at least i can go and try it and figure out if that's what i'm into or not um, yeah 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 but yeah i i think your original i don't remember your original question was about 
Um, I don't even know either. <laughs> it was about the planning is done. Knowing it's done, yeah, yeah, kind of like the process. Um, even the process of it, like not just knowing it's done. Like, do you? You've, you've got three or four paintings you're working on right now. You're to get off this call later, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna go. And yeah. Like, how do you pick which one? Do you start a new one? Like, when you start, do you start with a color? Is it a item? Is it looking up yeah. something catches you? Like, so the other week, it was, or it was like Monday or Tuesday. Um, I was setting up my I I'm I'm in a class called BA Portfolio, which is just a class for studio art majors mm. who just who are like juniors or seniors who just basically want to work on. Mm -hmm. Portfolio. So that just means work on the art that you do yeah. already. Mm -hmm. um, and we get our own like kind of small studio space in Naval Art Studios. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went and I just set mine up, you know, put all my paint and shit everywhere. And, um, and I had like kind of these four canvases sitting in my garage that I just like, I didn't hang them on my wall. Like they weren't finished paintings. They were done from when I last touched them. But they just weren't, they weren't, you know, they were just now canvases sitting in my, in my garage. So I took them to the studio and I gessoed over them. And gesso is just like the, like, it's like priming a canvas. It's mm -hmm. like what that white, you know, when you buy a canvas, the white stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it's a, technically I can just put oil paint over acrylic if it's dried and that doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, but it's nicer sometimes with acrylic the paintings that are kind of done to just paint them with this like it's like white just primer so are you talking about like essentially getting rid of your previous work with it yeah yeah yeah. yeah. so i'm just painting over just it's like i'm painting it white i'm just yeah. painting the canvas white again and, okay. and starting from scratch um and it's always weird with that because i'm like do i want is this like do i want to now like erase this in a way yeah. or not even erase because i know it's underneath like there's yeah. So most famous paintings in the world, every painting in the world, there is something underneath that painting yeah. that you will never know or it was never there. And the only person that knows that it's there is the artist. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I was just, I was blasting music, you know, in my headphones, like it was paint over. And gessoing is actually like a really just not fun process because it's thick mm -hmm. and it kind of takes a while to dry if you're using oil, if you don't want them to like really actually mix, like you'd have to wait overnight kind of, yeah. um, if you wanted to be like safe, but I'm like, yeah. I don't, I'm not patient enough for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I've been starting to do like, I've just been starting to make like really weird tools, mm. not even tools. There's just these long wood beams in the studio yeah. and I'll duct tape like a really tiny brush to the end of them. And I was like, dude, I, this is what I was doing the other day in the studio. I was like running with the stick, like, jousting the canvas, and then, oh my god, and like from far away too, because I it was a stick like you know this long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just one. I'm just trying out like, let's just see what happens with this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, with oil paint, like if you just dab oil paint on it, like it would just you know it'd be a glob of paint versus. You use solvents and thinners with oil to just to thin them out basically yeah. they are thinner and you can you know, move them around better mm. and so i'm playing around with different mm. ways to make shit look yeah. and, um but i also okay. like, someone walked in and be like what the hell is this kid doing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what um <laughs> what did you think <laughs> it like helps me like figure out okay like I now know like when in my head I'm like, oh, I want to do a stroke that's that's mm. thin, but also like you're not seeing like I want something that's gestural, but also like it's kind of sporadic and like I want things to like pop off the sides. And the only way that I know I can do that now is from 15 feet away yeah. with a paintbrush attached to a yardstick. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, you know, like I'm far, far away. And that's now just my method for doing it. <laughs> um, that's awesome. And so, I don't know. I mean, and I'm in this new studio space too. So like, it's fun to like, now I'm in a new atmosphere. There's different lighting. Like it's just, you know, I take my headphones off and it's this weird kind of like eerie sound. It's not like my garage where like, well, there's cars and shit. Like it's just completely different. Um, but yeah, I guess I just kind of like, right now I'm just putting paint down. I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, it's like putting me, just putting a track down and seeing what happens. Like, yeah. I'm just putting paint down 
Um, I'm doing a lot of research into artists, like old mm -hmm. artists that I like. Mm -hmm. um, Willem de Kooning and Joan Mitchell right now are like the big two for me. Mm -hmm. um, who are both just abstract expressionists, post-war abstract mm -hmm. expression painters who just have made an impact on me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not like, I'm not mimicking their styles, but mm -hmm. I am like thinking about them. And yeah. like, some uh, one of my uh, friends, I was saying like, oh, I'm, you know, studying William de Kooning right now. And she was like, oh yeah, I can see that. Like the strokes, it was yeah. like a classic art kid conversation. Like, oh yeah, those strokes are very de Kooning-esque. Yeah. Like, I was like, word, cool. Um, That's awesome. Just to, to interrupt though, like, it's the same thing with music stuff. It's like, there's certain artists or songs that I'll kind of A-B like test with too. But it's also, yeah. I, I'm like, I listen to music differently now than I did a few years ago. Like when I'm, hearing a song or something it's like the way it growls like like versus a boom it's like yeah. wildly i catch on to those things a lot in a it new way than i did before you know, like how they did that right yeah. like yeah yeah yeah, how, yeah. You know, how they made that, that sound or how they made that work and now yeah. you can just you now you're like okay i can do that now but yeah. also i can make it my own yeah you know? yeah yeah it's there's one extra uh, example it's it's almost like I'd almost call it like throwing, like throwing the bass into the air. It's like, or not even the bass, like basically it's a trick that I always thought was so cool. And it's like creating space when it's not a lead element. So it's basically like, imagine a sound or a lead bass sound. It's like, but then this effect of the thing I'm talking about that, um, this guy, Mer do you know Immersive? Um, I don't know if I'm Okay, it's super major inspiration for mine, but he has this thing in a couple songs where it's the, and it's, I'm like, okay, wait, he's not just throwing, like, basically it's a reverb delay trick where you're, but you're automating it. So instead of just having it on there, which would naturally create space, it's like letting it ride. And then at the very tail of it, massively boosting it for like a quarter of a second. And then as the next thing's coming in, like creating a big loop, with the effect. And so it's a weird thing that, but I'm talking about this because it was the other day when I was working with another um, Bruce guy where he's like, he brought up doing that. And I was like, oh my gosh, this has totally been on my mind. And so like, even now talking about it, I actually haven't directly tried it, but it's that same shit where it's something I used to just be like, that's a, the sound is so cool. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, she did like a growl reverb throw. <laughs> and like, I know how to do that and can do that. And maybe that's the missing flare in my, drop why it feels empty in places or it doesn't feel as grandiose it's like let me try a reverb throw like i don't know it it is just like a fun nerd out thing that i think same, oh, with the painting it's like the brush stroke style yeah you see something that you like in a song or in a piece of art mm -hmm. and then because now like you make music and i do art like, every mm -hmm. day it's like when you have that kind of moment where you're like oh shit i know how they do that yeah 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 before you were kind of just you know it's not like you didn't care but you just you liked it because you yeah. liked it that's yeah. it yeah, yeah. and now i like it 10 times more because i'm like oh mm. i know how they do that yeah 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 in the I best know, i know what they mix to do that like i know yeah. how far away they stand from the fucking canvas to do that like, yeah 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 the, um, the shit that i love is when i'm at a show or listening to a song and i'm still like how the fuck did they do that that's like when i'm like the, yeah. the, the guy immersive is it's some little like shit he just like he's such a cool producer and um yeah it's the little shit where he'll still and there's a lot of there's a handful of producers that still and uh, you know anyone can do it but um yeah it's the it's almost too that's where the, the sonic voyage back to that it's like take me through some shit that like for the for the real people who are like genuinely listening to it like my music even like it's honestly sometimes bad just to have laptop background music like it's not good <laughs> but when you really like again enter into the world of it like either headphones on like really blasting in a car you start to it interacts with you differently and like that's the music I, in the world i'm trying to do and so um when i have those experiences like that's when i get fucking when i'm like god damn like I, you know it's just the like nodding your head of, like there's there's people out here who are fucking deep into this world that like it's cool it's just cool to see and, and yeah. that's what inspires me too it's like how in the fuck did that happen <laughs> yeah man, that's sweet and i like how you say like you're creating like a world because it is 
like when you put on when you strap on a pair of headphones or you're in a you know i went to a rave with some friends a yeah. couple weeks ago and it was like my first real rave yeah it was from like 12 a.m to six in the morning yeah. and literally it was so much fun do you know ben ufo oh uh, no i don't actually it's like a london it's like a like techno house like kind of okay. thing yeah. and you know, I, I don't listen to that music like in my free time and stuff, but I like that kind of stuff. I like kind of the environments that they're in, like these weird, like undisclosed warehouses. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in like six hours, I'm just like dancing to this like over and over and over. <laughs> you know, some people aren't into, but dude, yeah. by six a.m., I am back against the wall. I was asleep standing up. Like, oh my God. <laughs> and I like, I kind of snapped out of it and stuff, but I was. <laughs> I was just in this mm-hmm. you know, this completely different realm for yeah. six hours yeah 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 yeah. that is i don't know there's something about that that is just you can't you can't duplicate that yeah um, it's like present you, know, you can't duplicate your what you're trying to do just like i can't no one can duplicate a painting unless it's a really mm-hmm. good forgery but even though even though even then that's not yeah real um so yeah, I really like that. Well, there's something too. Um, I think from the creative process, it's kind of that like people talk about flow state, right? It's just like it's the same thing from the either listening or viewing or whatever it is standpoint of really what that's talking about is just like being present and really just kind of being in it. And to that point too, of like I'll go to music shows that aren't even quite my style at all, but once I'm there, it's like you just got to submit. Like it's just we're here. I- I'm not gonna. Yeah comment about if it's shit fuck i'm like oh let me just let them fucking do their thing and i'm gonna ride out it to how it feels right for me and like that yeah. feeling of just being present in and someone else's kind of realm is cool too and i think that's where like the healing side of music and a lot of stuff is people deal with a lot of shit in life and you come into these shows or things and people talk about it, like music saved their life in certain ways or art or whatever it is but um it's it's like that it's kind of like knowing and, and also not just the artist to you but the collection of people there kind of on the same thing it's just there's no who's better than who this that it's just we're all here you're all experiencing something yeah you're, you're all just experiencing me together and there's something like super kind of like tribal and um like that's where like that healing nourishing side of where the start of this combo was it's like there's yeah. something just about that that is like kind of a little bit magical and then again, if I, it's like almost a gift to myself to be doing this, but then also a gift to the world of, well, maybe if I can be a part of pushing, maybe it's one person can have kind of like this experience that helps them in some way, like, well, then fuck it. Isn't it worth it? Like, who cares? Like, it's so... Um, as if it's bad or good, as long as you're proud of it, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's all that matters at the end of the day. I think. Sharing yeah. that with people is, is, you know, what's... There's the... If, I also love Anthony Bourdain, and hmm. if you thought like the, there was like a quote in the movie in the documentary about him and stuff, it's kind of like, and it and it, it's kind of the arc of his demise in a way. But like, what's the point of doing things and and seeing new things and and experiences if you have no one to share them with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think about that thing a lot because, in many respects, it is really nice to do things alone and hmm. like have solitude and things like that. But mm-hmm. in the same rate, if you're making things and mm-hmm. you're, you're proud of them and you're, and you're having fun, like it's mm-hmm. a lot better to do those things with people. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, and it's a little thing of um, I've kind of come to realize this in a really intense way over the past year and a half. But like how important it is to be like best friends with yourself. It's kind of like that like normalized self love sort of thing, which I've always been in that mode. But how seriously I think I take that now, like you at the end of the day there's all these people around this snap like in your moments of solitude and maybe it's your creative art process like finding joy you're doing your little fucking stick thing making a fool of yourself but like that's just you having fun with your like you it's like being best yeah. friends with yourself it's like that's also i think a super you know because everyone you know you want to be a good person and bring other things to the world and all this stuff but like that does start with you and being in tune with you um so yeah, I guess that's also something that just I've, I'm still in the relationship with and forever forward will be. But um, 
And yeah, that's I'll, something that, like you and me will have, like and everyone will, but I think art amplifies that. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Amplifies that is, because you are, at the end of the day, like when you're making a song, you're by yourself. Yeah. Or when I'm painting, I'm by myself. And those are those nourishing moments. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, we can. That's a good, <laughs> good full circle. Uh, yeah. Good yeah. thing there. We can kind of call it here. But um, yeah, appreciate appreciate chatting on everything. Uh, yeah, even yeah. now I'm like I'm about to hop off this back too. I got I'm gonna get that fucking song. I might do a sound session now. I don't know. Gonna... <laughs> but um, thank you so much, man. This is great. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Um, cool. Well, yeah, I'll just call it here, and um, yeah, we'll we'll have to grab a beer. Even even do a little session where if uh. What we got what we got to do is I'll get like a little board set up. Brennan's got to do uh, get the visual thing and then you should do like live painting. We'll do a little like there was someone at your show at Black Box that was live yeah. painting. Oh, you got to do that, dude. There are people all the time doing that. You should you should hit them up, email Black Box, send them a picture of your painting. Send me like, how do I just want to come in and do the paints? They'll probably be like, oh, here's a we have three slots open. Ever just put your name down for two weeks from now or something. Oh, dope. yeah. I th people are doing that all the time. They're just over by the side and there's, yeah, yeah they, you, you get the little light hangover thing and then you can just yeah. listen to some kind of crazy <laughs> tunes. And because Black Box is also good, it's a lot more of the under, less, I mean, people play whatever they want. Yeah. But a lot of times it's, you'll find more of the low frequency realm of music, which is cool sometimes oh, to vibe out to while, while painting. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Uh, well, sweet, man. Thanks. I'll, I'll look into that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Well, uh, we'll chat soon.